Hello and welcome to a, a book haul video. If you missed part one, I will link that up above. That is because I, in the last few weeks, have found a just windfall of wonderful books, both to resell because that is how I make my living, and also to keep because I am a reader, I am also a book hoarder, which I am perfectly happy to admit to, and I'm now going to show you all of the books that I am going to keep. Now, a lot of these books were either awesome, amazing finds and or they were gifted from awesome, amazing people. And so I will also be thanking a lot of people in this video and hopefully you guys are here for that. But let's go ahead and get into it. So I am currently doing a Nebula Award challenge where I'm trying to read all of the novels that have won the Nebula Award. Now, some of the Nebula Award winners are actually a part of a series and I feel like I have to read the whole series to get to the Nebula Award winner in order to like fully appreciate it. And so I started reading the Murderbot series and the first book review intrigued my mom so much she actually has read the entire series now <laughs> before I could finish it and she has loved it, I have loved it so far and so she gifted me the other two books in the series. The fifth book in the series is the one that won the Nebula Award but the actual series itself is a Nebula Award winning series like it won the Nebula Award for the series. And then a couple of the novellas in the series have also won individual awards. So if you have not heard of the Murderbot series, don't worry, I will review the rest of the books, but the first book is reviewed here on my channel. It is excellent. I have read the second book. I just need to film a review for it. But this is book six and book seven, and I do believe a book eight is coming out or in the works. But these are by Martha Wells, so I have both of them. This is six and seven, so Fugitive Telemetry and System Collapse. So excited about these. So mommy, thank you very much. I'm so glad <laughs> that you have liked the series and it's, this is really great. My, I came from a family of readers, so that has definitely helped fuel my, my own collection. This next book is a gift. This was sent to me through my wish list, so thank you very much. It was 28 Prototype that sent me, and I think that's Rob, but I'm not 100% sure, because it didn't come with a note in it. So uh, I do know the username on there was 28 Prototype, uh, which is the Twitch username, and I think it's Rob. So Rob, I, I do believe this is your gift to me, but thank you. I am a big fan of Cassandra Clare, which that is what this tattoo is. This is the Clockwork Angel trilogy right here. Um, so I have bought all of her books. I have not read them all yet and this was one of the ones I was missing and so this is a gift. I had this on my wish list so thank you so much. I have all of these books. So I have all of the Mortal Instruments. I have not finished the series because I got distracted by the Angels, Clockwork Angels, the Infernal Devices which is the Clockwork Angel series and then I have all the Dark Artifices and I also, I think, have the chain as well. I think I have the chain. Yeah, I have the Chain of Iron series as well. I have all of her books now. I also have the first book. This is The Eldest Curses. This, I, this is the second book. I have the first book as well. I have bought them all. I just haven't had enough time to read all the books that I buy or all the books that are gifted to me or all the books that I come across magically which is not a bad problem to have. So thank you so much, Rob. I really, really appreciate this. So now let me show you some books that I have picked up and that I am keeping. I managed to find a first edition copy of Blade Runner 2. Not the first one, the second one. I don't, The Edge of Human by K.W. Jeter. Uh, this says Christmas 1995 to Sean from Mom and Dad, which is fine. Um, K.W. Jeter is also the writer for Dr. Adler, which I also have, which is kind of great. So I found this and I'm keeping this because that's kind of hard to find. I also managed to find a hardcover copy of A Peculiar Peril by Jeff Vandermeer. I have been collecting his works after reading Annihilation because I really enjoyed Annihilation. It was another Nebula Award winner that I'm really glad I got to read and y'all encouraged me to read more books from him. Also y'all encouraged me to read the rest of that Annihilation trilogy, but I'm not really interested because I thought Annihilation in and of itself was a perfect book. 
So what I'm going to do is read some other books by him and see if maybe that'll change my mind. If it's like, okay, well, he's a really good writer, so I will continue to read the trilogy, but I think Annihilation in and of itself is like just the perfect, the perfect book in and of itself that I don't, I don't think it's a perfect book. I just think it was done in a way that it could be perfectly fine by itself. It didn't need two more books, but I have this one. And I also have uh, Jack Faust by Michael Swanwick. Or Di Michael Swanwick. I don't know how you wanna wanna read that. I uh, I don't know. You guys told me that I should read Michael Swanwick, and then when I saw this hardcover copy of this book, I was like, all right, well, it's a first edition from 1997, and I realized that this is also not a common book, so. As you guys can tell, I have a propensity towards hardcovers if I can find them. Uh, I'm going to open up some more Christmas gifts. So my aunt gifted me a copy of Legends and Lattes. Uh, I, it was up for the Nebula Award last year, but it lost to Babel. And Travis Baltry is my favorite uh, audiobook reader. He's he performs a lot. He's an audiobook reader. He's somebody who performs on the audiobooks. You know, I've just become accustomed to him, listening to him with the Cradle series. Pretty much he, uh, he reads all of Will White's books and I thought it would be a disservice. I don't know why. I thought it'd be a disservice as if I listened to his book on Audible because he's going to be performing his own book. And I thought it might be nicer if I just actually read it. So I'm really glad that my Aunt Lisa gifted this to me. There is a f second book already out. Uh, and a lot of people have told me that they love this. So Aunt Lisa, thank you so much. I'm really excited about this. You guys have told me that I definitely should read that. That is not a book. That is a video game. Uh, this was a gift from my brother. This is The Speed of Dark, a novel by Elizabeth Moon, but I think this was also sent to me as well. So I have two copies. I'm gonna hold on to both copies and then when I read this book, I might do a giveaway. We'll see. I read the premise of this book and I am a little apprehensive towards reading it. This is a Nebula Award winner and this was like the last one that I could not find and had not come across. And I do believe the reason why I'm apprehensive is the reason why it was hard to find. This is one of the Nebula Award winners and the main character is autistic. And this comes from the time period where people were like trying to cure autism and trying to prove a correlation between vaccines and autism. I am autistic. So I'm a little apprehensive reading this because it's probably going to be like, it's, it's I'm, like I said, I'm just apprehensive about it. And then we have V.E. Schwab Gallant, which I am also very excited about. I think this is one of her YA books. And this was also gifted to me twice. My mom and my aunt both bought me this book. So my mommy returned hers, and I think that's why she gifted me the other uh, Martha Wells book, is because she had to return one, so she just swapped it out. So. I have some really wonderful people in my life that make sure that I will never be short of something to read. Yeah, this does look like a YA book, but I love V.E. Schwab. I love her Darker Stage of Magic series. I've talked about her before. Another author where I will buy up everything that she writes, even if I don't get around to reading it, just like Cassandra Clare, because amazing. The Darker Stage of Magic series is just awesome. and. I'm gonna show you some more stuff that I found. Uh, this is Stephen Crane. I've only ever read The Red Badge of Courage by Stephen Crane. I, I live in the South, I live in Virginia, and probably the book I have bought and resold the most because I find it all the time is different variation copies of The Red Badge of Courage, which is something here in the South everybody has to read, I think in like end of elementary school, beginning of middle school. I have a vintage hardcover copy and I buy and sell it so many times that it's just kind of a thing. So I wanted to read something else from him <laughs> and this sounded interesting. This is Maggie, A Girl of the Streets by Stephen Crane and 
it's two stories in one. It's uh, the second story is George's mother, a tragic tale of the Bowery. So these are uh, two short stories about uh, ladies of the night, it seems. So there is that. I also scored this on whatnot. Uh, I don't just sell on whatnot. I buy on whatnot. And one of my favorite sellers is Zigzagoon. She's amazing. She has great luck finding some vintage copies. And so when I saw in one of her Instagram posts that she had a copy of The King Elfland's Daughter by Lord Dunsany, I had to scoop this up. Matt loved this book, which as someone who doesn't like reading fantasy, that was surprising to me. So if he finds this beautiful and enchanting, I can only imagine as someone who loves fantasy, how I will feel about this. So I snatched this up, I think for a steal at $12 shipped to me. So like I said, I don't just, don't just sell there. I also buy there. It's kind of like a give and a take. Speaking of my friend, Matt, he talked about On the Beach by Neville Shute. And I found this vintage copy in a bin for a quarter where if I did not buy it, it would have ended up in the landfill. So this one is from 1957. So one of the original older copies of this. It is a little, little torn, but it's perfectly serviceable and it'd be interesting to read about that. There's, there's a couple of classics in here. So this is F. Scott Fitzgerald's Flappers and Philosophies. I've not heard of this and it looked like a short and easy read. I do like F. Scott Fitzgerald, um, The Great Gatsby. I would go on my arm. This is supposed to be a literary sleeve, uh, but COVID happened. And so I didn't want to be like this close to somebody for hours at a time. I think you guys would understand that, especially since I'm immunocompromised um, because of my neurological disorders. So eventually this will get done. Uh, not right now, but eventually it will be. So The Great Gatsby would be on here as well. The, the eyeball, like the blue watercolor eyeball. I love that artwork. I think it's gorgeous. Flappers and Philosophies. And then I have several Tanith Lee books, which was amazing to me. I found a more recent copy of Knight's Master by Tanith Lee, which again, Matt gave a good review to. And then I found two of her books from Tales from the Flat Earth. I found Delusions Master and Night Sorcerers. So I have book three and five. I just have to find the other books in this series. But I do know that Tanith Lee is hard to find, at least in my area. So when I saw these uh, in unread condition, they have no, they, these spines are uncracked. Text blocks are beautiful. These are in amazing shape. They just have some remainder stamps on here at the bottom that I definitely needed to, to find, keep those until I could complete my set. I also found this book. It's called Mythaga Wood by Robert Haldstock. This is another fantasy book. And I picked this up because I read the back of it it sounded amazing. And also the front cover is gorgeous. And it looked like some mouse chewed on it at some point. Here at the corner. So I was like, I'll just read this one. Uh, instead of trying to sell it because it definitely does look like something went ang, 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 on it. But it's unread, which is tragic. This would have been completely brand new if a mouse hadn't decided to eat it. But now it will be read. The next book I want to show you is Old Man's War by John Scalazzi, or John Scalazzi, Scalazzi, I, whatever. I know this is, this and Red Shirts are like his two most famous books, so I was really excited to find a, a like new edition uh, for very cheap. Most of the books that I have shown you, I have paid a dollar or less for. Like if I said I've bought it, except for that one Lord Dunsany book that I bought from Zigzagoon. Most of the books, if I find them out in the wild, I am paying a dollar or less for them. If I buy it off of whatnot, I'm paying up for them, but I think it all balances out because most people don't get to find really cool books like this for less than a dollar. I have just been blessed by the book gods. Speaking of, I could not believe I found a paper, a vintage paperback copy of Smith of Wooten Major. 
by J.R.L. Tolkien. And this is like two short stories of his. It's The Smith of Moon Major and Farmer Giles of Ham. And this cute little, little vintage paperback. I was so excited about this. And speaking of, I also found a vintage copy of The Similarian. I have not read The Lord of the Rings in a while. It's been a while since I've read them. I've read them twice, but it's it's about that time. And this is a first Ballantine book edition from 1979. So, very excited about that. I thought these were amazing finds, um, just in general. Very happy about that. I also found uh, one of my favorite classic authors is John Ste Steinbeck. I absolutely love the way he writes. I do, he doesn't normally write about nice topics, so I always feel uh, a, a lingering sense of melancholy after I read his works. Uh, but this, maybe not so much. You can see that the dust jacket is a little, little damaged there. But this is a hardcover copy of The Acts of King Arthur and His Noble Knights, which is a retelling by John Steinbeck of the, the fable of, the king, of king Arthur. So I thought this would be great. I find it so interesting that this has a Ford with Christopher Poloni, Palo, Paloini, the guy who wrote El, Elder, Eldest Air Dragon. I don't know. I tried reading that book, but I can tell that a 15 year old wrote it and the sentence structure is so simple that I couldn't get past the first chapter. I was like, I'm bored. I can't do this. So if it's your favorite series, I'm so sorry, but I could not get down with his writing style. I'm, I know that he got better as he got older because we all do. We all age like fine wine in my opinion. So I think that that's interesting that someone who in my opinion has a very simple writing style to write an intro for John Steinbeck is just a little ironic there, but happy to have a hardcover of this. Oh my goodness, y'all. <laughs> if you, if you watched the first book haul, you saw that I am selling um, some Robert Heinlein's, mostly Stranger in a Strange Land, and that is because I found a hardcover copy of A Stranger in a Strange Land, and this is the original uncut version. It does have some little tears in the dust jacket, but I thought this would be great. And it does say free in here. I did not pay free. I, I did pay a dollar for this book, but I still think that that's kind of amazing. That I found three copies of this one book and then managed to find an uncut version in the hardcover. I also found a hardcover version of The Moon is a Horse Mich Mistress by him. I have not read any of his books yet. I have been told that I would not like them, <laughs> which is probably valid. But I think this is a reprint of some kind, but there is that. And then I also found off the main sequence, uh, a short story collection by Robert Heinlein. So. I found three Robert Heinleins. Now this one looks like it got a little wet, but that is okay because, you know, I'm keeping it for myself. And then let me show you guys some books that are gifts. This is a set of books from R.D. Allen. I have not opened them yet um, because they were actually wrapped as presents, which Artie Allen, thank you very much. That is incredibly sweet of you. The note is, for a booktuber who appreciates the correct author, author your subscriber, Artie Allen. Look at how cute these are. Look at, look at this. That is so precious. I absolutely love that. Okay, so the little thing says, I am first, the little, cute little stocking note. Also, you did an excellent job wrapping presents, by the way. I know for a very long time, my mother struggled learning how to wrap presents. He gift, I'm, 
I'm like staring at it super hard because I cannot believe what he sent me. This is Christopher Stashie to the Magic Born. And the reason why my jaw dropped is because the dragon is Stegaman from uh, Wizard and Rhyme series. And nobody talks about Christopher Stashie, but I, when I reread, when I do my annual reread of this book, I will um, review it for you guys and talk about it more. But this, the reason why it's foremost on my arm is because it's probably one of the most significant books in my life because it's the whole reason why I started reading fantasy <laughs> as voraciously as I did. So this is Escape Philosophy and The Warlock in Spite Himself. Read these stories in publication order. Okay. Uh, Escape Philosophy came out in 1983 and The Warlock in Spite Himself came out in 1969. He was a very prolific writer in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and then, like, n like nobody talks about him anymore. But I I love the Wizard and Rhyme series, and I have slowly been collecting his books. To have a hardcover is just absolutely lovely. And then I have a second book, which I'm guessing maybe also is another hardcover for Christopher Stashie. I am last. I like it's I am first and I am last and not like I am first, I am second. It's I am first, I am last. That's very cute. Alright, this is a plastic type paper so it's kind of hard for me. I don't have feeling in um, half of my hands so sometimes like this kind of stuff is a little hard for me but who doesn't like opening presents? <laughs> So this is Odd Warlock Out by Christopher Stashief. Oh, I'm guessing this is two more of his books. These are more stories in between to acquire. So this has The Warlock Heteratical, The Warlock's Companion, and The Warlock Insane. I actually have some of these in paperback, but I will happily replace them with the hardcovers. Oh my goodness. Alrighty, Alan, thank you so much. This is so amazing. I am as you can tell, very giddy. I had no idea what these were. I, especially when I, I opened the, the box up to make it easier. And then I saw that they were wrapped presents. So I was like, all right, I need to like not open this until it's on camera. And when I saw someone who appreciates the correct author, I thought maybe it was somebody sending me Chuck Palahniuk books because I got a couple comments saying that, oh my God, somebody else likes him. This is better. <laughs> this is so much better. Thank you so much. Oh man. I only have one hardcover book by Christopher Stashie, and that is Her Majesty's Wizard, which is the first book in this series. So this is amazing. I'm so grateful. Thank you. I have two more books to share with you guys. One of them is, like I said, unfortunate because I do believe Rob sent this to me. Uh, this is another copy of The Speed of Dark by Elizabeth Moon. So like I said, I'm going to hold on to both of them and I might give one of these away. Um, my brother can't return the other one and I don't, and Rob can't return this either because I own it now. So, uh, I might just pass one of these on to you guys uh, when I get to this book because we are going to finish this Nebula War Challenge this year. We must do that. And then I'm a sucker for a cover. So the whole reason why I started reading Cassandra Clare is because I saw the City of Bones, uh, at... Barnes & Noble, because I think when those books came out, I was working at Barnes & Noble at the time. I started reading them, and I was like, I love this series. And then it was between that one or buying Clockwork Angel, but I bought the other one. And then when I was waiting, when I fin got to the point in the series where I was waiting for more books to come out, I was like, oh, well, this other series exists. It was the cover art. This, look, okay, here, let me show you. So this is Clockwork Angel, all right? I saw this cover art, okay, and I immediately had to get these books. I am a sucker for these. So if you look here in the back, because this is the original copy I bought, you can see here the three books in this series. There's six books in this series. So I was waiting for book four to come out when I bought this one and then devoured this series because this series had been finished already. So when I saw this book, doesn't that look very similar to those? 
So I saw this in the store and again, I paid a dollar for this and was like, this looks like a book I would enjoy based just on the cover. I am sorry. I know you're not supposed to judge a book by its cover, but I am somebody that does that. I have found some really amazing books doing that. And that's why I picked this up. It is Felix Palma, The Map of Time. I have never heard anybody review this. I have never heard anybody talk about this. I just liked the shiny pretty man cover. And that is why I picked this up. It is a it is set in Victorian London, which when I opened that up and saw that, that is what the Clockwork Angel is set in, is set in Victorian London. I have a big soft spot for London because I took a, a graduate level Egyptology class uh, by the British Museum in conjunction with the British Museum. And I, I spent a lot of time in London for that. And I really, really am excited I have a, a love, like I can still like remember what London smells like. And for those of you that live there, maybe don't think that that's great, but that was like my first time in like a really big metropolitan city uh, where I had a lot of fond memories. So also the food there is amazing. Like British food in and of itself isn't that amazing. Like, I, don't get me wrong, bangers and mash with a pint, amazing. But the fact that they were an empire that conquered a lot of places and all of those people came on that, that tiny island and shared their food and culture with the British people. You can find some amazing food in London. So I gained like 10, 10 pounds because <laughs> I ate a lot. But thank you guys so much for sending me books. Uh, Alan, Artie Allen. I don't know what your first name is. So can I just call you Alan or do you, do you want me to call you Gendry? Or do you want me to just call you R.D.? R.D., thank you. Rob, thank you. Of course, my mommy and my aunt and my brother. Thank you very much. Again, I love, I love books so much. <laughs> and they, um, they've been good to me throughout my life. So I will continue to collect them and I will continue to try to read as many stories before my time is up on this mortal coil and I will see you guys either for my book auction or my next video. Bye! Bye! <laughs>